Okay. Just drying it off. So we can finally get a good look at it. What's underneath all that paint? I can take that off now. Okay, so what am I seeing here? A very dark oxidized roof with a few scratches in it. I'm sure some kid slid it upside down here and there on something, but it's not as bad as a lot of them I see, that's for certain. Um, there's a few pits here and there, a little oxidation in the pits, but they're not deep, they're not bad at all. A few dings and bangs up in the front end here. More oxidation. So there's a big oxidation spot right here on the rear fender. Looks like maybe that was a spot where the paint came off many, many, many years ago and it just was exposed to the elements all those years. It's a little rough right there. So I'm not sure if we're going to get the zinc plating to pop on this quite so much or not. Again, got the brass brush out. Trying to see what we can get going here. Yeah, that, that bent A-frame is not, not very noticeable at all. try and just polish this with a little car wax. Let's see what happens here. I'll start on that hood since it seems to need quite a bit of work here. Might have to do this a couple of times to get through all that oxidation. Look at that. So yeah, now I'm seeing more pits and more scratches. It's definitely exposing. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Way more than I needed. Okay. Each time I use just a little less material. Let's see what we're getting here. Wow. That shined up really nice, although it's got uh, Some toning back in here and a bunch of little toning spots in the front. And then lots of little hairline scratches and pits. But, wow, all, all the zinc's still there. Except where it's been toned out and scratched off. That's nice. And if this was a lot of the other custom cars, they have black roofs, and that would be hidden. But this is a Barracuda. It doesn't. It didn't come with a black vinyl roof. 
So we may try dipping this in the zinc plating. See if we can fix some of that toning, some of those scratches, some of these pits. Although it's not bad. But that Spectra Flame paint, everything shows through it. So, and I think, I don't remember what I decided, what color I decided I was going to paint this, but I think maybe blue or green. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I think it looked good green. It looked really good olive, but I think I don't know if they ever made these things in olive or not. I know they made them in green. Super shiny. Yeah, this has got just a, a funny milky color underneath the zinc, it seems like. And this does too on the very tail end. nice super shiny lots of oxidation and toning and discoloration up here in the front let me finish off this tail back in a little bit here Discoloration's going on in there. See if I can get in here a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of this that, that milky coating it's all over there, all over here, all around the edges. You didn't? Yeah, it's all rough and pitted right there. I might have to hit that with the Dremel before we zinc it, because uh, that's definitely going to need some zinc right there. It's just never going to shine. Zinc is what shines through. It's kind of like uh, like metal flake in today's paint. Well, if you got this zinc underneath a paint that you can see through, well, then you kind of see that all that shininess come through the paint. I'm done for the night. I'm going to pick back up with this tomorrow. Another day. Anyway, we made a lot of progress here. You know what? So here what you're seeing is uh, a new hood I ordered showed up. And I'm trying to see if I can get it to fit in here. But uh, the studs are a little too big. Uh, the 
pivot points where this, the studs slide into are just like they were from the factory. Uh, that usually they're broken out or wallowed out and they weren't. So I think this hood at one point had the pins on either side of it just broken off and I think those are the weak points. Uh, either that or the, the little clamp inside that holds the studs in. One of those usually breaks when they push the hood open too far when kids do. So here I'm playing with it, trying to figure out which side I'm going to work with first, trying to figure out how much material I'm going to take off. Am I going to take it off on the car or I'm going to take it off on the hood? And I've decided I'm going to try and use a little file here to file down the little studs on the side of the hood so they're smaller so they'll fit a little better. So this is just a lot of trial and error going back and forth till you get it to work. Um, let me go ahead and speed it up here and show you what it looks like after I've tweaked on it enough. Okay, so here's one last test fit. Realize I got to take just a little bit more off one side or the other. And then we'll try it again. Pretty sure this is where it finally finally slides into place. There it goes. Alright, so now we have a hood that goes up and down. The problem is, is it's going to fall out because the uh, little C-clamp where it slides into isn't tight enough to hold those pins. So you need to put something over top of it. And I just take a little piece of wire and uh, you'll see that here in a few minutes. And I uh, super glue it, basically closing off the C. So basically turning it into the letter D by putting that wire on top and gluing it down. And you have to be real careful with the glue on that because the pins on those hoods need to uh, revolve back and forth. It needs to be able to move. Otherwise you're not going to be able to put your hood up and you're going to glue it shut. So you have to be very careful where you put your glue. Uh, you also don't want a big giant piece of wood, uh, metal or something stuck under there that's kind of in the way of your tires, or your wheel wells, or your interior. So the smaller, tiniest little piece of metal you can get in there to kind of close that off without gluing your hood shut, the better. So I zoomed in here real close to see if we could see a little better what I'm doing, but um, it's very difficult to show these tiny little pieces of metal and then the glue uh, that I'm touching on either end to try and hold it in place. Hopefully you get the right idea of what I'm doing here. Uh, if you ever take a car apart and get to this point and need to mess with the hood, you'll uh, You'll see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you'll first start on a few cars that have hoods so you can see how they work before you go to try and fix one. Um, anyway, sorry for my hand being in the way and uh, camera angles are always a little difficult when you're working on tiny little things like this. Anyway, I was, I was successful in getting uh, little glue on all, all, the, all the sides and not locking up that hood. So uh, unfortunately the footage isn't really great here for a teaching moment or seeing it. But there you can see the little piece that I picked up with the glue because I was trying to put glue on the end of it and the glue stuck to it. But 
Moving it back into place. And moving it up so it's not in the way of the wheel well or anything else. And then I'm making sure the hood is still moving. And so the next day after the hood was in place and dried, uh, cleaned the carp really good and actually took some rubbing alcohol and some degreaser and really made sure there was no oil or grease or grime or grit. You really want a really clean car before you start painting. So uh, when you go to paint that car, um, the Redline Shop paints, the Spectre Flame paints, are a five to one, five parts of paint to one part hardener. The hardener is a clear hardener, and my airbrush has uh, got a pretty small little reservoir on there, so I can only get about 25 or 30 drops of the uh, color, so that then I can put five or six drops of the hardener in it, uh, any more than that, and if I try to mix it or uh, I end up spilling it out of my little reservoir in my airbrush, I need to get an airbrush with a bigger reservoir. One of these days I'll upgrade. So anyway, the uh, you mix it together and uh, and put on a light coat. Um, I, I guess the, the bonus of having the small reservoir is that it allows me to put on uh, thin layers of coat coatings of paint and then uh, come back a few minutes later and put on the next layer of paint. Gives it a few minutes to dry in between each one. Um, depending on the color of the Spectre Flying paint, uh, the lighter colors usually take a few more uh, coverings, um, sometimes four or five or six uh, layers to get the color you're really looking for. Some of the darker colors you only need uh, three, sometimes four. Uh, layers to get a good uh, good consistent color that you're looking for. So here I've got my first uh, coat I'll paint on, mixing more paint for the second coat. I didn't even get the whole car coated. Uh, I don't think the uh, roof or the hood actually got a whole lot of paint on it. So I'll probably, yep, yeah, here I am starting on the front, working my way back. And uh, I think what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and fast forward through a few uh, coatings of paint and let you see what it looks like when it gets all done. So here's the last coat of paint going on. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is when you're airbrushing, you want to hit this from every possible angle. Um, 45 degrees and straight on and 90 degrees and just turn that car as much and as often as you can. Uh, there are lots of little details in some of these cars and the only way to really get into those details, deta detail areas is to really uh, intentionally move that brush around and uh, really get it going at every different angle. So anyway, here I'm making sure the hood still opens. Uh, I didn't get a bunch of paint down in there and I'm going to dry it closed. And just inspecting it, making sure it's as dark as I want it and everything is looking good. And uh, I think we're pretty much done with paint. Just need to let it dry for a day or two and uh, just do a little cleanup. Be careful with that hardener. It will um, definitely lock down the lid if you don't uh, clean the lid real well before you uh, close it back up. 
Okay, so here we are back with the custom Barracuda. Got everything set up here, ready to put it all together. Um, had to wait on a new windshield to uh, show up. I messed up the last one. Anyway, let me show you a little close up here of uh, what we were talking about earlier. And basically, the hinges. The hood hinges in here. There's a pin on the hood that goes into a slot right here and you can kind of see that pin right there going into the slot here now the problem is you have to open up this slot to get it to go in or you'll break those pins off so then once you've got that slot opened up you can slide those pins in and now the hood will just come right out so that's where I take a little piece of metal here and I glue it from the body, the wheel well, back up into the body here to cover up that wallowed out hole there where the pin's at. Do that on both sides and now the hood's not going to go anywhere and it works like it did when it was brand new. So there you go. Now let's uh, put this thing together now that we have all our parts. We got our hood. Down on that pin hole. That's what's wrong. Alright, so on these guys, on the Barracuda, you need to get this front of the windshield up underneath right here then you need to get this pin in so on this one it's pretty tight there it goes now without it popping off throw the interior in there and there we go that's the key they're all a little different you gotta play with them till you figure them out so now we can get our base on doesn't look like that snapped into the front very well there it goes and I'm going to screw this bad boy together pretty cleaned up custom Barracuda Pretty well. Alright guys, 